I'm Jarvis Mack, SVP of Customer Success at Rocket Fuel. Rocket Fuel is a programmatic buying company in the media space, and we're powered by artificial intelligence. Well, that's a really great question. I think um, what the sales side, which Adam represented, as well as Jerry Wong, also from ABC, is they wanted to actually have the agencies push that along. So during the course of the meeting, what we discussed was, hey, you guys on the buy side, what are your pain points? And luckily, we had uh, Chris from L'Oreal kind of chime in with, with a few ideas of his own. But one of the concrete, tangible takeaways we had was, well, what we could do is nominate a few of the folks from the buy side on the agencies as well as some of the direct clients to talk about them. What are the commonalities? What are the, what are the pain points that they're seeing so that we can put together a requirements document which may form the basis of a letter to a company like MediaOcean? Or, if you want to go so extreme, as to say, hey, maybe that even becomes an RFP for a company that would like to fulfill this need that we're saying that we need. Now, it'll be an interesting challenge to see when we try to actually get all those people together in a room, you know, are those really the commonalities that they can really agree to, and what are they? I think there was. I think um, there was a, there definitely an energy to the, side, to the room, initially driven by the folks from ABC, but I think there was a lot of good cooperation also from the buy side because they also do have opinions. This is, and the reason was the whole reason we had the panel in the first place. You had to have people from both sides sit down together because if you only had the sell side, then MediaOcean may not cooperate. Or if you only had the buy side, MediaOcean as a company or a company like MediaOcean may not cooperate. But if you can get both sides that have some consensus, that agree on a few different key principles, then you can get the key linchpin of the system to start to pay attention. Absolutely. So yes, um, you know, one of the things we talked about, and, and, and is even the case today, is programmatic buying is already a big part of the overall landscape. And so when we think about big picture, 5, 10, 15 years ago, uh, I'm sorry, 5, 10, 15 years from now, we're going forward. <laughs> 5, 10, 15 years from now, you know, we're talking about a lot of information, a lot of media that can be automated. And how would you do that in a programmatic marketplace type of environment? So much so that, you know, we did start off the session talking about Magna Global's you know, their, their very brazen uh, statement saying that they want the goal of automating half their media buys by 2016. And so we talked about that. That's not just digital, that's just not just video, but it's all media buying. So can we get there? Absolutely. What does that marketplace look like? Well, it's going to be transformed because the point uh, that was brought up from the folks at Brightroll is that, hey, we need to talk about IP addressable media. When you have IP addressable media that already basically facilitates a lot of the transactions on the technology side that previously you may have been, done, been doing in an analog fashion. So we have IP addressable media that allows you to bring it into a digital marketplace that much faster. Now, go even farther ahead, think about outdoor, think about TV, think about print. If you can bring all that inventory, obviously you can't swap it out nearly as quickly, but from a planning and buying perspective, if you can bring that into all the same marketplace, then absolutely, then we're very much progressing toward that world. Potentially, potentially there's an area where, you know, some of the things that we're talking about to facilitate where media buying, specifically video buying is today, some of those things can be greatly facilitated by some of the things that we're talking about, that we talked about today and the way we'd resolve them, the pain points that we're encountering. But down the road, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, presumably when a lot of this stuff, when you, when you don't need really people doing handshake deals nearly as much, that a lot of it can be automated. So, uh, you know, do I think there's a place where salespeople go away, you know, as much as it may sound weird to say that? No, actually I don't. I, I think there's a place for salespeople, for deals, for sponsorships or packaging for relationships still to have a place but I think very much that that's going to be complemented in a big way by uh, programmatic buying and I think one of the things that we talked about as well is if a company that facilitates the current transaction process right a company like MediaOcean if they don't pay attention if they don't listen or if they've got other priorities uh, around the product development and how they respond to the industry then what are the alternatives well actually a very real alternative is that some of the inventory, some of the transactions do happen in a programmatic fashion. That could be one of the alternatives. 
I did not go to the new fronts, and uh, actually the new front discussion was a really interesting one too, because my comment at the end was that I felt like in some ways we're trying to solve a paradox. Uh, the reason you had company uh, initiative like the new front was you have all these planning dollars already being spent. So let's capture some of that offline TV mentality. Let's develop some scarcity, talk about packaging, and talk about content, and see what's out there. But in fact, what you're also catering to, and the audience that's coming to that, are not the traditional media buyers. We're talking about people in the digital space that already understand the value of it, but also know because online is, is a very demand, supply and demand driven space, they don't need to do that. Yes, yes I do, but the question is what kind of fish are you getting? Are you getting the right fish? Right, so let's throw some hooks in the water. It's designed to catch the big fish, which is the video dollars. But in fact, when we look at the all media spend, digital is still the small fish, right? So are we getting the small fish or are we getting the big fish? How do we get, make sure we get enough of the right fish for the hooks that are in the water? Well, that, that's the paradox. That's the paradox because, yes, can, digital can use its own, uh, can use its own event, but the, the dollars, the, the hooks that we're trying to put in the water to catch the right kind of fish are the big TV dollars, it's, right? It's about migrating TV. It, it is migrating TV dollars, and right now, all those dollars lie with the, the TV, the broadcast buyers. So therefore, in order to hook them, you need to speak in their language. And so we need to speak in their language, then you need to talk about standards and the currency of trading in that and get them to pay attention. And one of the discussion topics we had during that session was, is it even big enough to care for them to, for it to matter that they should care about that type of thing? Because how much reach are they really going to get compared to some of their existing TV programming? And so that was a point of contention that's worth discussing a lot deeper because what's happening in the new front right now is not, it's, it's not just video packaging. What uh, AOL and Yahoo are doing is a package of video with display.